body colonial rule, participated actively in the Second World War. From 1940 to 1945, my uncle fought, fought under the British flag in Burma, present day Myanmar. However, Nigeria's role in the international arena had never diminished since then, but rather increased since it attained independence from the United Kingdom on October 1st, 1960. This role is influenced largely by its domestic environment, including its geography, its history, its politics, its religion, and economy, and of course, by its perceived national interest within a broader global setting. I argue in this paper that Nigeria's activist foreign policy in Africa and in the world was thrust upon it by the exigencies of its history, its geographical location, and by its resource endowment. I also argue that it remains in Nigeria's interest to continue with its policy, quote, of maximum continental commitment and vigorous engagement at the international level. Nigerians are generally peace-loving and altruistic towards the outside world. By its demographic composition, Nigeria is practically divided into two halves, as Christians and Muslims, with a small percentage of enemies. The idea of Atheism is negligible in the country, restricted mostly to the high intellectuals. Sometimes in 2003, Nigerians were even declared the happiest people on earth by some British surveys. In 2007, they were equally discovered by the same survey to be the most religious people on earth. It is pertinent to note that in reality, the biggest church on earth today is the Winners Chapel, Canaan Land, which is found in Otago State, Nigeria, that can seat 50,000 people at the same time. As we all probably, that is in the Guinness Book of Record, as we all probably will recall, the issue of contiguity or neighborliness is an important factor in international relations. Nigeria is located in West Africa. It is bordered in the north by Niger. To the northeast, the Chad, and you know after Chad, you have Sudan. Talk of Sudan, talk of Darfur. So you can imagine the link, why Nigeria is interested in urgent solution to Darfur. You have ethnic Nigerians that are there. Over the years, they've been living there. Some probably missed their way while coming from Mecca to perform the pilgrimage. So it's the same people moving around. And in the eastern part of Nigeria, you have north northeastern part, the Cameroons. And also, in the west, to the west, you have the Benin Republic. In the south, you have the Atlantic Ocean. But in the south eastern part, we have a maritime border with the only Spanish-speaking country in Africa, Equatorial Guinea. This configuration forms a natural center point of the African continent between the Cape and Cairo and ties Nigeria's destiny to Africa. With a population of about 150 million, Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa and the eighth most populous country in the world. It is acknowledged that out of every five Africans who are black worldwide, one is a Nigerian. And there is a joke of a chief who was from the Caribbean. He had three babies, and the wife was interested in having another child. And the man, the chief, refused. He said, I don't want to have the first child. I'm sorry. They said, well, chief, your village wants you to produce more, to show examples that you are productive, you are fertile. He said, no. And they said, Chief, why don't you explain to us why you don't want to have the fourth child? He said, well, you want me to produce a Nigerian? <laughs> don't you know that one out of every four black persons is a Nigerian? <laughs> Nigeria. Moreover, according to the 2008 estimates of the CIA fact book, which we all use, Nigeria has a vigorous and largely youthful population population structure. From 0 to 14 years, 41.7% of Nigerians are aged between 14 
and zero years. And the male, 31.17. Female, 29.8. We are slightly more male than female. 15, between the ages of 15 and 64 years, 55.3%. And those who are 65 years and above, only 3% of the population. In addition, Nigeria is blessed with abundant natural resources, including tin, columbite, iron ore, coal, limestone, gold, manganese, marble, lead, uranium, zinc, natural gas, and arable land. The vegetation belts of Nigeria comprise the mangrove forest of the marine south. Through the thick equatorial forest and moving northwards, you have the Guinea, Sudan, and Sahel savannas, all rich in flora and fauna. However, the mainstay of the Nigerian economy in the past used to be agriculture. There were in those days when you have the granite pyramids, the peanut pyramids of Nigeria. But then there was the oil boom that came in the 1970s. And everybody left the farm and came to have the oil money. And so, oil, the mainstay of the economy is oil. Nigeria's economy is reputedly the second largest economy in sub-Saharan Africa. And the mainstay now is the crude oil, petroleum oil. Oil accounts for more than 98% of export earnings and provides over 90% of the country's foreign exchange revenue. Nigeria is the biggest crude oil producer in Africa, 12th largest producer, and the eighth largest exporter in the world today. It has the 100th largest proven reserves and is a member, 10th largest proven reserve, 10th, sorry, and is a member of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. Nigeria is confirmed to sit on abundance of wealth of natural gas, gas reserve. It exports an average of 11.515 billion cubic meter liquefied natural gas by 2005 estimates. Nigeria exports liquefied natural gas to European countries, Italy, Spain, France. Nigeria has a strong manufacturing and industrial base and large and well-trained armed forces. Nigeria is one of the largest troop donors to world peacekeepers of the United Nations. Also, it has well-developed financial, legal, communications, and transport sectors. Uh, to a greater extent, Nigeria, apart from maybe China, is a, has the fastest growing telecommunications network in the world today. Also, and it may be interesting, the Nigerian GLOW network provider is the one supplying network now to Benin Republic and is bidding for other African countries. It has a well-developed stock exchange. The Nigerian Stock Exchange is the second largest in Africa and had won many international awards for its profitability ratio. This favorable national, national power variables have enhanced Nigeria's role in Africa and in the world, often referred to as the, quote, giant of Africa or the heartbeat of Africa. Nigeria has utilized its vast resources to support its national interest and to pursue altruistic policies at the international level. Nonetheless, Nigeria's external behavior over the years is guided by the principles of self-defense, protection of Nigerian citizens, national prestige, stability in West Africa and in Africa, self-reliance and freedom and democracy. Evidently, these principles underpin Nigeria's policies of, quote, good neighborliness and Afrocentrism. You know that Nigeria went to Liberia and we remained there until democracy was enshrined. We went to Syria alone on behalf of the world and we stayed there until it was enshrined. We lost many of our men, but we were able to deliver because blood is thicker than water. The relevant provisions affirming the centrality of Africa as a centerpiece of Nigerian foreign policy are contained in section 19 of both the 1979 
1999, 